Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, sing for joy to cry. Oh, sing for joy to cry. Come on, somebody sing with me. Hallelujah. Somebody rejoice in the presence of God. Hallelujah. God bless you, Sister Gunnar, for coming. Those of you, I can't see your names on the screen. God bless you for tuning in. Let's worship him. Oh, sing for joy to come as friend. Oh, sing for joy to God as friend, as friend. Oh, ooh, ooh, to God. Friend. Oh, sing for joy to God as friend. Yes, sing to the Lord for joy to God, our strength. Oh, my God. He's our strength. He's our strength. God bless you, Sister Anne. Sister Anne, God bless you. Popola, God bless you for coming, Elizabeth. Sing. Oh, sing for joy to come as then. Oh, Hallelujah. Sing and worship. He will answer us if we come to him. He will answer us if we will. Tonight's topic is very interesting. You will like it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Just stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Say, so draw nearer to God. When you draw nearer to God, he will draw nearer to you. Click the share button. Let's click the share button, please. Let's invite people. Let's invite people to be a partaker of this meeting tonight. Sing for joy to God our strength. Sing for joy to God our strength, our strength. Strength, oh, sing for joy to God. Our strength, oh, sing for joy to God. Our strength, God is our strength. Somebody sing to the Lord, whose strength is ours tonight. Sing for the Lord, His strength. In him we live, in him we find our being. Let's sing to the Lord, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Our strength, oh sing. Oh yes, Lord, we bless you, we bless you. Somebody invite people, I'm inviting people right now. Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Yes. Draw nearer to God. He will draw nearer to you. Amen. 
Yes. Let's invite people to go astray. Oh, see. For joy to God our strength. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our strength. Oh, sing for joy to God our strength. Sing for joy, for joy. To God I stand. Praise God. For joy to God I stand. Praise God, praise God, somebody. Let's begin to worship the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, somebody. Let's bless the name of the Lord. Bless Him. Bless Him. Bless Him. Bless Him. Worship Him. Name higher. Lift, it, lift His name higher. Lift His name higher. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God is awesome. God is awesome. God is awesome. Praise Master Jesus. God bless us all for tuning in tonight. <clears throat> we give God the praise. We give Him the adoration. We thank Him for the gift of life. I just want us to begin to reference God for what He's been doing in our lives. Life, let's thank Him for provision. Let's thank him for shelter. Let's thank him for all he's been doing. For, you know, being with us. Going out with us and bringing us in safely without any accident, without any problem. Even when the problem seems to occur in the spirit realm. But by the mercy of the Holy Spirit, God has been, you know, keeping us safe, protecting us even to, to the unseen, you know, attacks of the enemy. We bless him. You can do that so let's open our mouth and begin to just bless god let's bless god let's bless god just bless him worship him lift him higher reference him thank him give him that privilege that preference give him that preference honor him he's our god hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus so if you're finished praying for that let's begin to thank god let's thank him god bless God bless you. I want us to open our mouth and begin to ask God for, for mercy. Let's pray for mercy of God. The Bible says, For all have seen and come short of the glory of God. All have seen and come short of the glory of Almighty God. So I want us to just open our mouth and ask God for forgiveness of sin. In any way we may have sinned against God. In any way we may have offended Him. In any way we may have come. In one way or the other, let us open our mouth and begin to ask God for forgiveness. He's a merciful God, He's a kind God. 
He's a God that can do all things. He's a God whose heart is full of mercy. And I want us tonight to begin to ask God for that mercy so that the door of heaven will be opened unto us tonight so that God will give us deep understanding of what we're about to look into tonight because it takes the wisdom of God and the knowledge of God and the understanding of God to understand some certain things of the gospel, of the ministry, of, the, of God we are serving. So it takes real understanding to know some certain things about the you know, things of the kingdom. Hallelujah. So let's just ask God for that you know, protection power and empowering power tonight so that we can be equipped, so that we can be ready, so that we can be, you know, uh, you know, worthy tonight to be a partaker of what God is about. This cannot be hindrance of what the Lord is about to do in our midst tonight. In the name of Jesus. As we have prayed that, I want us to also begin to pass a decree because the Bible says has given us authority, every authority, every power to decree a thing and it shall come to pass. I want you to open your mouth and begin to decree in the Holy Ghost. Begin to tell God that every power that is not of Him tonight, that will hinder our gathering tonight, that the blood of Jesus will destroy them. In the name of Jesus. I want somebody to be in the Spirit tonight. I want somebody to be in the Spirit right there where you are in your house. I've told us time without here in the presence of God. We should take it serious. We should reference it right there where you are in your house. Just leave whatever you're doing. Leave your your, 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 maybe whatever you may be doing, just forget about that. Give God full reference. Sit down quietly in your house. If it is, you want to sit down, you sit down. If you want to sit on the floor, sit on the floor. If you want to lie down on the floor, but don't sleep up there. It is better you sit up or you stand up than, you know, sitting in a position that will make you sleep off. No. Just take permanent control over the atmosphere tonight. Ask the blood of Jesus to subdue that which is not of God tonight. Every spirit that is not of God tonight. Every monitoring spirit that is not of God tonight. Every follow, follow demon that is not of God tonight. We command the blood of Jesus to destroy them. In the name of Jesus, we command the blood of Jesus to destroy them. We command the blood of Jesus to destroy their power. They are meeting tonight in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to destroy the meetings of the enemy, the meetings of the witches and wizards, the meetings of of every power that is not of God, wherever they may be gathering tonight, oh my God, as they gather, it is not for, because the Bible says, surely they must gather, so they might be gathering, they are gathering, not that they might, they are gathering tonight somewhere, but we decree that their gathering is not for us, because God has said so, it is not we saying it, but the word of God has decreed so, their gathering is not for us, and so we exercise that authority, and we decree into their kingdom right now that we render their power powerless. You don't get what I'm saying. We render their power powerless. We render their meeting tonight useless. We call it void and, 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 and powerless, useless. It can't stand. It cannot work because the sense of God is gathering here tonight. The sense of God is gathering here tonight. And our prayer will prevail. It will prevail. It will prevail. It will prevail. It will prevail in the name of Jesus. It will prevail. It will prevail. So therefore, begin to take authority over every junction, over every every corner, in your premises, in the area you're living. You never can tell. There are demons that could be gathering in the area that you are living. God bless you, Rudy, for coming. Rudy Dave, God bless you for coming. So you never can tell where they are gathering tonight. But we pray that as they gather, the blood of Jesus will destroy them. The blood of Jesus will useless them. The blood of Jesus will render their power useless. In the name of Jesus, just begin to pray. Begin to plead the blood of Jesus over your household, over your family, over your, your premises. Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus. I sanctify this vicinity with the blood of Jesus. I sanctify this compound with the blood of Jesus. This, this building with the blood of Jesus. Lord, this arena with the blood of Jesus. And I render every power that will make unnecessary move. Lord, useless in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, I put them to where they belong to. Lord, I pray that you equip me tonight. I pray that you equip your children tonight. Equip them spiritually so that they can be fit, oh God, tonight to stand what we are about to discuss, oh God, to give us deep understanding of your knowledge about this topic tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, ancient of days, we worship you. 
Ancient of days, we bless you. We give you praise. We give you adoration because you're awesome. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, Lord, we soak ourselves with the blood of Jesus. We soak ourselves with the blood of Jesus. We soak our destinies with the blood of Jesus. We soak our children, our marriage with the blood of Jesus. Everything you have laid in your hands with the blood of Jesus. Father, we pray for your own understanding. Somebody lay your right hand on your forehead and begin to pray for the understanding of the Holy Spirit. The understanding of the Holy Spirit. Pray that the Lord will open your eyes and your understanding about the message we are about to look into tonight. That the Holy Spirit will open your understanding that God will make you see things the way you are supposed to see it according to the scripture not according to the the, the patterns of men not according to the the doctrine of the church of today or the doctrines of men of God or the doctrines of uh, you know members sometimes members too can bring in their the ideology that is not of God that is not of Christ but we pray tonight as we look into the word of God as regards what we have tonight to discuss heaven open our understanding in the mighty name of jesus may god himself speak to us may our eyes be open somebody pray that prayer like you mean it pray that your eyes will be open that your eyes will be open your eyes of understanding will be open in the name of jesus let it be open let it be open let it be open by the power in the name of jesus begin to pray that every cobweb that will cover your eyes or that have been covering your eyes let it vacate your eyes to Jesus, a couple that has been covering your eyes or that has assigned to cover your eyes, let that cobweb give way now. Because sometimes when there is spiritual cobweb in the eyes of people, they, 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 they don't see things the way it's supposed to be. They don't see, you know, the, the things of the kingdom the way it's supposed to be. Even some men of God, their, their eyes are covered by spiritual cobweb. So we're going we're gonna to be praying tonight that the almighty God will remove every spiritual cobweb that is that's covering our knowledge about the things of God, about how we should do things the right way. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God, that you help us to unveil every cobweb against our eyes. In the name of Jesus, even those that are watching out there, we pray, oh God, Jehovah, that you open their eyes of understanding. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, help them, oh God. They cannot help themselves. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, precious Redeemer. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. God bless you all once again for tuning in. Please, have we, have we clicked the share button? Have we clicked the share button? Go back, don't come. Have we clicked the share button? Please, if you have clicked, if you haven't clicked the share button, please, click the share button in the name of Jesus. Click the share button. Go, go and meet your daddy. Go and meet your daddy. Go, 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 go. I'm praying now, please. In the mighty name of Jesus. So, let us click the share button in the name of Jesus. One minute, please, one minute. Give me one minute. Oh, yeah, come this way, come, come, come. One minute. Praise God. <clears throat> that is my little boy. <laughs> hey, she... Thank God. We thank God. We just give God praise. Hallelujah. 
sorry for the interruption i'm just back again so like i was saying by the grace of god i have before us tonight a topic i titled is the use of anointing oil i want us to deeply look at this topic because you know, some people talk about olive oil, the use of olive oil in the house of God. God bless you, brother Dave, for coming. God bless you. God bless you in Jesus' name. So, please, let's, let, let, let's pay attentive. Let's pay attention to what we have tonight. So, the topic is, is the use of anointing oil by biblical. Is the use of anointing oil by biblical. Or should the church stop the use of anointing Is the use of, please, if you hear me, can you just type it on the screen for me? Is the use of anointing oil biblical? Is the use of anointing oil biblical? Or should the church stop the use of anointing oil? Or should the church stop the use of anointing oil in the churches of today? In the churches of today. <clears throat> because... I just want us to, you know, look at this um, topic because some people, the way they they see anointing oil in church, the way they look at it, the way they, you know, misuse it, the way they do things, is becoming a um, misunderstanding. It's becoming confused, you know, confused. Some are getting confused about the whole stuff. Some of us might not really, you know, understand this level, and some of us may have understood it to this level. And some of us may not know much about anointing oil, or may have not used it before, or may have been intending to use it, but because they are not convinced yet, if it is biblical, if it is right, they should use it. You know, so tonight we will know with the brief, you know, um, illustration. I will be able to give by the help of the Holy Spirit tonight. We can be able to tell. Yes, is the use of anointing oil biblical, or or should the church stop the use of anointing oil? Or should the church, Sister Vivian, God bless you for coming in. This is a this is a very important topic because I have um, I mean I've heard enough of. Some talks about anointing oil. People talk about anointing oil. You know, members who don't understand what the, the significance of the anointing oil. People who don't know what what you know, the the the, the you know the importance and all that. They just talk maybe because they they are not used to it. They don't know about it. They don't know what it is. So, and by the way, what is the anointing oil we are talking about? This is the anointing oil. This is anointing oil. I just bought this one of recent. Most of us that is watching now will see what I'm showing us. This is anointing oil. Anointing oil. This is the original anointing oil that I know. I don't know about all this type that uh, they used to sell in a shop like olive oil. They, they call it whatever, whatever. See, this is the correct Goya anointing oil that I have known from foundation. Hallelujah. Virgin Extra. Praise God. So, that is it. I just bought this one for myself. I don't, I don't, I, it, it, in fact, it's always in my house. Anointing oil. I anoint it. I pray, I pray. I just lift it up to God. I pray, pray. Sometimes if I want it to carry more power, I use it to do fasting. Fasting. I fast with it or do midnight prayers on it. I'll be using it. That's it. So that is the oil we are talking about. Praise God. And now, questions have been going on. Anointing oil. Pastors, the way they misuse anointing. Members, people talk, people talk, people talk, all sort of things. So now, I just want to, you know, clear, make it clear to us that the use of anointing oil in the church is biblical. 
the use of anointing oil. God bless you, Sister Krista, for coming. The use of anointing is biblical. It is biblical that we use anointing oil. God commands it. Anointing oil is biblical that we use it. God commands it. And what is the, the, the benefit of anointing oil? Anointing oil helps to break yokes. Anointing oil blesses. Anointing oil, you know, favors. Anointing oil heals. Anointing oil restores. Anointing oil gives life. Anointing oil does so many things to the sick, even to the unsick. The sick can use the anointing oil. The unsick can use it. The healthy can use it. The unhealthy can use it. Maybe it's like favor or just protection, stuff like that. If you for protection, for favor, anoint yourself for protection, anoint yourself for favor, decree. Say, God, I am going for interview today. Let me be favored before whoever I, that is going to interview me today. That is it. It's a stamp. It's a stamp. Galatians 6, 17 says, Let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the mark of Jesus. Yes, the anointing represents the mark of Jesus upon you, because Jesus himself is the anointing we are talking about. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ himself is the anointing. God is the anointing. He's full of power. The power that is in Christ is the anointing we are talking about. Hallelujah. So, when we look at, uh, if you look at James 4, uh, James 5, 14, Jesus, uh, the Bible said in James, James uh, uh, 5, verse 14, it said, Is anyone among you sick? Is anyone among you sick? Let him go to the elders of the church. Let them lay hands on him and anoint him and pray for him. And verse 15 said that if, if he has any sin in him, the sin shall be forgiven. And I will heal him. So can you see now that anointing is biblical? Help me put that scripture down, please. James 4, James 5, verse 14 to 15. So when you look at that scripture now, you will see that that scripture falls to the category we have mentioned that I, you know, I told us the importance of anointing. Anointing blesses, anointing heals, anointing delivers, anointing restores, anointing favors. Hallelujah. So, the, the James, James 5, 14 to 15 is in the category of the, the you know, healing. Anointing saves. Anointing forgives. Yes. When the anointing, when the person is anointed, like the scripture says, he said, he's, he, and, he, and, he, and he's been prayed for. His sins shall be forgiven because of the power of the anointing that is in the house. Hallelujah. So, the use of anointing is biblical. We're going to talk some certain things into details tonight. Hallelujah. So now, looking at Isaiah 10 verse 27. What does the scripture say? 27. The Bible says, For it shall come to pass on that day, that thy yokes shall be taken off from thy shoulder. Thy body shall be taken off from thy shoulder, and thy yoke from thy neck. Because of what? Because of the power of the anointing oil. Please help me put it down. Isaiah 10, 27. And it shall be that day that thy body shall be taken off thy shoulder and thy yokes off thy neck. Because of what? Because of the power of the anointing oil. So there is power in anointing oil. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let us not be deceived. People say, the use of anointing oil, this and that. Any church, they use oil, anointing oil, they, it, as if, uh, it is uh, it's not, um, it's a demonic church, or it's not biblical, or it's, no, it's, they are doing what is, what is not in the content of the word of God. Isaiah 10, 27. Yes, God bless you. So it now depends on how we use it, we'll, we'll get to that stage. So, when we look at um, even Ruth, if you go to the book of Ruth, Ruth chapter 3, verse 3, 
you will see that Naomi, the mother-in-law of um, Ruth itself, was telling Ruth or what to do for her to find favor before um, Boaz. Yes, before Boaz. You know? So, Naomi instructed Ruth on things to do, how she should, you know, clean herself, wash herself, get herself prepared, anoint herself before going to see, a, 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 you know, a, to, to sleeping. So he, she can find favor from, her, from him. So you can see that reading from that scripture, the book of Ruth, Ruth chapter 3, verse 3, that is where the, the instruction, that is where she carried out the instruction. But you can read it from verse 1. To, to you know to down you can then you understand it pretty well so looking at that scripture you can see that anointing brings favor anointing hallelujah anointing brings favor because the bible recorded that Ruth found that favor before um, um, uh, Boaz she found that favor before Boaz so and uh, she was called a virtuous woman do you see so it is very essential that, you know, we follow instruction, we do the things, we, we handle the, the, the God and it is wells according to his own word and according to his instruction. The problem the body of Christ is having today is that follow instruction. The body of Christ don't want to, you know, do things the way is instructed in the scripture. We don't want to do things normal. Because of what? Impatient. Sister Rodin, God bless you. Uh, Stephen Rodin, God bless you for coming. Impatient. We are, we are so impatient. We don't want to, you know, wait and follow things the way and the pattern is. Praise God. So, Having listened to what I have just said tonight, you can see that the use of anointing oil is biblical. Let's not be deceived. Let's not be duped. Hallelujah. It's biblical that we use anointing. This is my own anointing here. I have anointing oil. I just bought it for my own use. I pray over and I use it to anoint myself. If I'm praying or if I want to go out, just, you know, I use it to anoint myself. It's not every time I use it anyway. It depends. Maybe I feel somehow, I sense somehow in the, in the spirit realm. I just bring it. It's like a mantle. You don't handle mantle anyhow. You don't touch it anyhow. I just take it to anoint myself, you know. That is it. And you see God walk wonder. You believe you faith. And you see it walk. Hallelujah. So, that is what I just read tonight. That will give you the confidence that you know, God bless you, my dear. God bless you. Don't let anybody deceive you. Anointing is this, anointing is that. Come on, I don't want to hear that. Anointing oil is biblical. You have, you have the right. It's, it's a mantle. It's a mantle. Just like uh, um, uh, um, uh, 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 Elijah gave Elisha mantle before he, he, you know, he, he, he took off to meet his father. Mantle of handkerchief. You know. The, it, 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 it threw you to him. Look at his mantle. That is, that is his, the, the, the power. So anointing oil too stands like mantle too. It's a mantle. You handle it with care. You don't use it any. You don't keep it anyhow. You don't keep it, your anointing anyhow, anyhow. You don't keep your mantle too like handkerchief too. Handkerchief too is, is, uh, is, is biblical to use handkerchief. Handkerchief for you. Blessing of handkerchief, yes. What are we talking about? Eh? So, what I'm going to say that is not advisable is the misusing of all these things. The problem that the church has today is because they are misusing the privilege of these items given to us by God. God are misusing it. Believers too are mis misusing it too. I mean, I mean, uh, 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 church members, followers. 
Why? Or how? How do I mean? Church members, for instance, if they focus their mind on Jesus Christ, if they focus their mind on God, just looking for miracle, every miracle, every corner, miracle, 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 miracle. And you pray that the Holy Spirit should lead you to the church or to the ministry you should be a partaker of. And the Holy Spirit leads you to that place. You sense it. You sense the Spirit of God here. You sense the anointing. You sense it. You remain there and worship your God. You remain there and serve your God. You don't need going about looking here, looking this one, seeking that one. It is in the process of seeking and seeking, you seek the one you're not supposed to seek or get what you're not supposed to get. Hallelujah. So, the way people misuse the anointing is what is not godly. Some people will say, eh, eh, men of God, they sell anointing. They sell for you, they do this, they do that. Well, like that of selling anointing in the house of God. I don't think, um, is that right? I don't think is that right. Selling anointing in the, in, in the inside church or, you know, in the, inside church. Inside church, you'll be selling anointing. Selling anointing, I don't think that one is, you know, is, is right. But if the church, if the church have uh, something like, um, um, uh, you know, um, shop or store, um, bookshop, something like that, bookshop. Some churches have bookshop. They have bookshop, you know, they have where they sell church materials like books, handkerchief, anointing oil. All these things. Because if you go to a Bible for a prayer and the servant of God by the leading of the Holy Spirit, and this anointing oil in two, the way I see it, is not something that you know you use just like that, like because you want to just use it. It should it should it should come by the utterance of God. Maybe somebody you know went for prayer or for counseling. You know, the person he or she meets a servant of God, say, please, I need prayer. I want you to pray for me. And maybe in the process of praying, and the Holy Spirit opened the eyes of the servant and say, buy anointing oil, let me bless it for you. So that you can go and use it, you and your family. Or buy anointing oil, let me pray for you. You can go and use it to anoint your house, your new bought house, home. Anoint your office, anoint your car, anoint your engine, your car engine, stuff like that. Is, is he, yes, there's nothing wrong with that. And sometimes, sometimes to people, uh, some, uh, some, some churches don't sell. And some churches as well do sell too. They have it in their in, um, bookshop or wherever they sell their church material. Just outside the church there. You can go and buy from the church if you want. But you can buy from, you know, outside if you want. Like me now, the way I operate in my ministry, by the grace of God. Mostly, when we bless oil is when we are doing fasting. During fasting. Fasting like this, like, we normally fast every month of March, every year. 31 days fasting. So, if you need anointing, if you want it, if you need it, if you feel like, oh, you don't have any anointing again in your house, or water, you want to bless water. Yes, blessing of water, not, not, nothing is wrong with to bless water for you to use, no. You can buy your water, you can buy your anointing oil, you. and go to church during fasting. Bring it to church every day. So why prayers are going on, you can lift it up and be praying. When you know sometimes in the in the in the church or in the ministry, there will be a particular time when the atmosphere will charge up. Then you will see that the Holy Spirit is there in the house. You lift your anointing and begin to pray over it. And servant of God too can pray. He can he can say, Okay, all those of you that have anointing oil in the house, please can you lift your anointing oil up and your water? Let me pray for you. 
That is how me I do. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't say for you. I don't say for you. I don't say bye or you just bring by yourself. Why? Why am I doing it? Of things that we are seeing in the churches of today. Men of God are polluting anointing. Some of them will buy anointing oil to sell for members. Already is, is already a polluted anointing. It's already an anointing that they have they have uh, you know you know turned upside down with their with their useless power they got from Queen of Course or they got from uh, their 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 secret court their 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 kingdom. You know, they turn everything upside down. So when you now use it, you see something else happening. So because of all those things, there's nothing wrong for members to say, okay, buy, uh, for, for pastor to say, okay, buy anointing oil, drop it at the altar, keep them at the altar. Yes, some, yes sometimes they do it like that. You know, like in those days, back home in, in CAC, CAC church, you can buy, only the people can bring olive oil during a, a, a fasting and prayer or during any program in the church. When they come to church like this in the morning, they will go and drop the anointing at the altar. They will drop the altar. So after service, they will go and pick it. They drop it at the altar. They go, after service, they will go and pick it. Or some of them will, the instruction will be like, okay, if you're having like a seven days a program, people will, people will buy their... God bless you. God bless you, Sister Stephanie Rodi. That's it. That is, the, you know, the goodness of the anointing oil. So that is the thing. So some some minister will say, okay, buy your oil, keep it at the altar there. You pick it at the end of the fasting. So the end of the last day of the program will be when people will be allowed to pick their oil from the altar or their water. Maybe you, you bought water or you bought olive oil. You can keep it at the altar from the beginning of the program. You keep it at the altar there. Nobody takes it home. It will just be at the altar there. It's just that the word of today is polluted. The ministers of God of today, some of them are just something else. If not, there's nothing wrong in all those things. There's nothing wrong in you putting your oil at the altar. You know, leave your oil in the church for three days or for however. Either, either with program or without program. Everything depends on how your faith is leading you. How you, how you, you know... How you are touched in your heart by the leading of the Holy Spirit, even when your pastor is not even leading yourself. Or even when pastor did not instruct you to go and buy olive oil. You can just like, you don't have olive oil. You can buy and go and drop at the altar there. Leave it. If, if it is a holy altar, if it is not all this polluted altar then. You leave it there. The power of God will enter it. Each time the, the, the service is conducted and all that. And you continue with your fasting. Then the last day you just go and pick it. And that is it. Eh? But today now so many things are happening. That is why you see me. I don't have time for all those uh, selling of anointing oil. I don't sell. But I use anointing oil. By the leading of the Holy Spirit. Yes. You drink it. Yeah. You drink anointing. You, you mix it. You rub it. You can mix it with your cream. Cream, the cream you are using, you mix it with it and rub. If you feel like uh, rubbing it uh, like that, will, will, will make you feel look too oily. You can you use it like glycerin, add it to your 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 body cream, and that is it. And with faith, that is it. With faith. So the way the 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 body of Christ today, I mean servants of God, has turned anointing oil to, has made so many things you know go wrong. Okay. So many things go wrong. So, that's it. You can buy it. I'll just anoint it for you. And even when I'm anointing it for you too, I won't even touch it. Just, just in case of in case because so many things are happening now. Mechanic people. Don't let, don't let uh, uh, you know, uh, normal people. But people know who is who in the market square anymore. Everybody mechanic. Meanwhile, everybody is not mechanic. Everybody does not look like mechanic people. Some are mechanic, some are mad, some are their head are still at home. So it is with some servants of God. Some of us still know what we are doing. But most of all these ministers of God who is not even operating in the fear of God from the beginning itself. They are the people doing all these things. 
All these men of God that have gone to get power, they don't even have time misusing anointing. Mm. Feet washing. Okay, look at the case of feet washing now. Do we say feet washing is not biblical? Feet washing is biblical. Feet washing is biblical. Jesus did it, did it for his disciples. He washed the feet of his disciples. Eh? So now, do we say because the world is turning to something else, uh, people are using feet washing to doom people, and it's true. A lot of manipulations are going washing. A lot of manipulations, I am telling you, believe me. A lot of manipulations. So many men of God are do. That is where they wash out the glory of their, their, their members and take. By the time they wash your feet and wash your head, you are the person is doomed. The person is doomed. He's gone. You won't know what they are doing again. You'll be running after them like a mumu. You, you, you won't have your senses anymore. Whatever they tell you, do you do? You can't you can't even leave their church forever and ever. They tie you down, stuff like that. Hmm? So, all those things are what when you see today, you'll be like, this feet washing self. I don't want to be a partaker of feet washing. The same thing, um, um, uh, holy communion. Feet washing, holy communion. When you look at these three things, that is where the devil is using all these nonsense men of God to be killing and destroying people's destiny. Now, do we say because the body of Christ looks the way it is today, because of the way men of God, you know, handle um, this thing? communion do we say we don't we will not the way things are going in the church no we will keep taking holy communion because it's a command jesus said we should continue to do it till he come you know say we should continue to do it till he come all you need to do as a child of god is to look out for the right place is to ask the holy spirit to open your eyes is to ask god to lead you to the right place where you worship where you will fulfill destiny, where you will, you know, you will not be doomed, you will not be fed with what you don't know, where they will not miss something else with a holy communion and give you to drink, where they will not miss something in the water and say they are washing your feet and something else is happening, or the same thing anointing oil. So, child of God, all these things are biblical, but the way we use them is the problem, is the issue on ground. The way we misuse them, the way servants of God misuse it, so many things are happening, what they do with all these things. So we have to be very careful. We have to be very careful and be prayerful that the Holy Spirit will lead us, that God himself will lead us, guide us, teach us what to do in the mighty name of Jesus. Is anybody with any question about what we just tweeted tonight? Maybe you have question, you have something oil, washing of feet, or a holy communion, just ask your question, let us treat it, you know, so, another thing I want to point out, in all these things, sometimes why ministers of God do what they do too, they sell it, You know, some of them sell it to just, <clears throat> just to just, um, yes, that is it. God bless you. Many things, many things have entered the church of God. Yes, you are right. So there's something I want us to, you know, lay emphasis on again, because you don't look at the uh, issue. In one direction you look at it in two ways now the use of anointing oil with what we have discussed tonight is biblical we have seen that it's biblical having you know read um, James 5 14 
Isaiah 10, 29, Ruth 3. Ruth chapter 3, verse 3, but you can read it from 3 to down. You can see that um, uh, yeah, command that we should use it. So now, selling in the case of selling anointing in the house of God, some some servants of God, the way me I see some servants of God, because I know some true servants of God back home. I know some true servants of God back home. I am telling you some great women of God that I know back home then that when you go for counseling or prayer in their church, in their church, in their church, um, this thing, they sell it where they will tell you that um, they are fasted over it. And it's true, you cannot, um, you know, underestimate that or say no to it. They have taken their time to fast over it. They have fasted over it. They have, you know, prayed over it and all that. Uh -huh. So, they, they, some of them like recommending to buy from the one from the church. Because the servant of God, who is genuine, the genuine servant of God has already taken out time. And maybe bought like five cartons of oil or anointing oil or or two cartons or however however it may be and 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 took out her time or his time to fast and pray over it before they place it and over the counter at the church shop or bookshop or however she buys it he's already blessed he's already blessed but let people buy it at same at, at that same price they can get it from uh, another church um, from from shop i mean because why i would say that is because the bible said that freely i give freely we should give we should not place order um, uh, place charge on anointing uh -huh. so if you ask people to go and buy it from shop definitely they will they will buy it with money they will buy with money, but if church have in their own store, in their own church uh, bookshop or however, members should, should be able to buy it from there. Why? Because the pastor or the woman of God has taken out time to truly fast, not that he's, he's saying if it is that the servant of God has really taken out time and fast, well, of course, prayer warriors will be a witness to what I'm talking about. Prayer warriors will be a witness because prayer warriors cannot, they will be there with the woman of God they are fasting too and praying over the anointing and everything. So you see that you, you, you can't be, can be the same. I'm telling you, fast and pray over it and keep it. People will just come and buy and go, that is it. And sometimes when they don't even see the woman, sometimes you can't see the, the, the woman of God or the pastor to, to, uh, to anoint, pray, pray, uh, pray, pray over the one you bought. Uh -huh. you already you have already bought the one that is already prayed on you just buy it and just move on but it should be the same price they should get it from sh other shops or in the town or however that is that is it that is where you, you are fulfilling biblical uh, ordinances by not putting people can buy it from outside praise god so that is it and in the and in the other hand, if you are looking at it, in the other hand too, men of God too. Some of them too, looking at the way they've like some of them have I, I interviewed them, they, they will say ah people members their problem is too much members the way they behave members and it's true. Some people now, for, for example now, you you bought olive oil or you went to a, a prophet to pray for you to do something for another that. A servant of God took out his time to pray for you, cancel you, maybe do all, you know, that kind of a thing. And you are leaving. You cannot even say, Pastor, take this uh, uh, hundred naira or one pound or what is one pound? What can one pound buy in UK? What is one pound? Pastor, take this 20 pound or 50 pounds or even more if you have it. Use it to buy buy coke or buy soft drink and drink is there nothing wrong there he's just appreciating the servant of god because most times now you see that majority of servants of god are left hungry you know they are left their members don't even care people that god is using to bless them don't even care 
I am telling you. Freely we give, we know. Freely we... What about... God has given. What, what is your own, uh, you know, uh, 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 blessing to the, to the church of God and to the servant of God? What is your own blessing? That is why you see some servant of God do all these things they are doing. Let me tell you. But on no condition, on no condition, should any servant of God or any woman of God go get power, go get juju, go wash eye, go do charm, because he want to use it to manipulate his members so that they can be nonsense. God forbid bad thing. The God that call you is capable to take care of you. No matter how long it take. He may not be coming in bunk. He may not be coming in plenty. He may not be coming... But you will see that your God is taking care of you. He's meeting your needs gradually, gradually. God will always want to position people to be a blessing to the body of Christ. Or to be a blessing to the servant of God and to the church. But when they refuse, God cannot force you. God cannot force you. It's just that you have missed the... For God, for God to decide to use somebody to be a blessing to the servant of God or the church of God is a privilege. What God will do is to just keep quiet, wait until he finds another faithful servant who will be willing to render the service that he wants the, the, the previous person to do. So that's why you see some servant of God, they sell olive oil in the church, they sell, they sell. So when you look at it in the other hand, you can't blame them much. At the same time, we blame them because Jesus said we should not sell anything free. We should not, freely we give, freely they should take. But people should also use their sense. People should also use their sense. Just like people who go to church today, they, they go to church with empty hand. No offering. You know? Some of them will have it too. If you don't have it, there's no problem about that. If you don't have it, forget. Jesus knows that you don't. But if you have, give. That's only, that is only way the work of God will move forward. Because God does not bring you to that church. Um, a look where, you know, to be just looking. Or a warming bench. No. He brings you there, or he brought you there, so that you can be a blessing. Physically, spiritually, financially, materially, in everything. Praise God. So, when you look at what I've just told us tonight, you find out that it is, it is true. Some ministers of God will say they are selling the oil. When they use it and fast, they have taken their time to fast and pray and pray. So, people will buy. They will buy it, like, if they can get it, like, a... Uh, 250 now, like as at the time I left Nigeria, you know, Goya olive oil is 250. I don't know how much it is now, maybe it's more than that. They will say, okay, because they have fasted over it, they have taken their time to fast and pray over it. If it is 250 in the, in the market, the church will be telling you like 300. You know, they can make 50 naira again. So that is, they will say that, is, you know, eh, so they say they, them too, eat, they, they won't go hunger. So, <laughs> you see, so looking at it in the other side, you will find, you see that, you know, looking at what they are saying too, they are right. But in other way, because Jesus said, we should not do such thing. You should freely, we give freely, they should receive. So, obey the word of God, just leave people. Oh, God himself will take care of you. God himself will bless you. So, the Bible says, Woe unto that man who knows to do good and refuse to do it. Woe unto him. Sin unto that man who knows to do good. You know that this thing is the right thing to do. This thing is the, is the, is the right thing to do. And you refuse to do it. The Bible says, Woe unto that person. And what is woe? Woe is cause. Cause be unto that man who knows that this thing is it. So everybody should be careful. We, we, we all need to be careful, both ministers of God and members too. Because members too, sometimes they lure ministers of God to begin to do what they don't want to do. They begin to, yes, they lure them with their behavior, their character, their, their attitude. But at the same time, why would the character of a, a member to begin to do what is not right. What is against the word of God. 
It should not happen. It should not happen. Praise God. So, that is the thing. I just bless God for tonight and I believe that the message has blessed our life. I don't know if it blessed the discussion tonight anybody with any question do you have any question so we can just treat it you know so the issue there the lesson that i would say we all should you know take home tonight is we should all learn to do the right thing we should all learn to do the right thing if members learn to do the right thing Pastors will not be, you know, the body of Christ is, is, is the way it is today. In fact, I will say because members too, majority of, majority of the problem churches are going through today are the cause of members because if members fulfill their obligation in the hands of God as it's supposed to be, no pastor will go and be looking for where he will get power to, to gather members. No pastor will, will, will go washing eye to, 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 to prophesy or to, you know, lay hand and all that. It is why? Because, number one, majority of people of these days, they are not seeking for God. Many people of these days are not seeking for God. They are seeking for miracle. They are seeking for miracle. They are not seeking for God anymore. So, and whereby you see ministers of God, God has called them, and they are doing, they are answering the call of God, genuinely the way God has called them, just like as I'm sitting here now, I don't know one from two, I'm just doing it the way Holy Spirit has the way God has called me okay now you know, somebody will come to church pastor will be telling you give your life to Jesus repent, the kingdom of God is at hand Hell is real. Please, run away from sin. Let us not sin anymore. And pastor is teaching you the things that will, you know, connect your heart to God so that you can know that we are in the end. I think, you know, people will not want that. And the center of the message of the kingdom of God is salvation. And that salvation now, people don't want it. People don't want salvation anymore. And when God has called a servant, there's always a mandate to every calling. Above all, in all the mandate, the salvation is about the kingdom. Every other mission is just, is just like attachment to it. The general mandate there is to bring people to Christ. Reconcile people to Jesus. Bring people to Christ. Preach the kingdom, preach the salvation, preach the word of God. Tell people that, remind them of the coming of Jesus. Remind them. But generation is a pity that generation of today, they don't want to hear Jesus is coming, repent. They don't want it. What they want you to be doing is, once they just come to church, just begin to, just go and bring, lay, lay them miracle hand. Then begin to marry, begin to get husband, begin to buy car, begin to build, begin to do this, begin to do that, without relationship with God, without relationship with the giver of the blessings they are looking for. That is the genesis of all this corruption today in the house of God. And when you see pastor now that that God has called, who was doing it with his genuine heart? Supporting member, please don't do like this, don't do like that. Focus on God, love God, forget your miracle will come. Some people, when they say they, they, they don't get what they want, pra, they disappear. No, if you still disappear to another place with that spirit of that uh, miracle seeking, he still that the same sickness that you will still hold the person down there. The only, when, the only time when one will be cured from such disease is when you focus your heart on Jesus. When you focus your mind on Jesus as your Lord and Savior. When you believe that it is Jesus that you need. 
are not miracle. When you believe that it is Jesus that will, you, will give you eternal life, not the, the part-time and earthly things of this world that will, that will decay, vanish, and, and perish. The moment you begin to reason like this and begin to say, Oh God, it is you that I'm looking, I'm seeking after. I'm, 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 I'm looking for you. Not miracle, not this, not that. Of most of all these problems that churches are going through today, no. Most times it's because when members refuse to bow down and settle, serve God, help the work of God to, to move forward, then you now see pastor begin to consider to go and wash eye, to go and uh, do juju charm, to go and get a, a, a fetish power. So that he can use to manipulate. When he tell them, that is it. It's not going anywhere. Can't you see that? That is the reason why you see churches of today. Some churches, you see their pastor telling them, eat grass. Drink uh, um, fuel. It's the blood of Jesus. Eat snake. Eat uh, this, eat that. Do you think that those people are with their normal senses? They are not with their normal senses. It is because they have been doomed. Why? Because they are looking for miracle. 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 Prophecy. 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 When we, the moment we stop this mentality, the body of Christ will do automatic healing. Automatic healing. That is it. Many people want miracle. Many people want blessing. Open door. They don't want relationship with Jesus. They don't want to have any relationship with God. They don't want to know when you teach them the things, the things of heaven. Ah, they, uh, 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 you have just missed it. They will go angry because that's when you see pastor begin to manipulate anointing, manipulate feet washing, manipulate. Uh, um, um, Holy Communion. Because when he manipulates Holy Communion, he manipulates the anointing, he manipulates feet washing. Yes, they will, he, they will remain. He will tie them down. But I pray that as many that are under such operation today, I release the blood of Jesus upon them, wherever they are. Let, let them free. And let the blood of Jesus lose them and send them to where they will see Jesus. They will worship Jesus. They will see Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They will have relationship with Jesus. They will study and know that it is only through Jesus that they can make heaven. Not through miracle. Not through olive oil. Not through receive it. Not through prophecy. But through Jesus Christ himself. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for those that their eyes are yet to open. So what we have taught tonight, I pray that the Holy Spirit will open their eyes of understanding and the mystery behind what we are talking tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that the heart of men will be made ready for the use of Jesus. I pray that the heart of men will be made ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus. I pray that souls will be getting ready and preparing for the return of Jesus. By looking less on the things that does not really matter. And looking more on things. Things that will help them grow. Things that will grow their heart, their spirit in the things of God. Things that will you know, keep them connected to God daily in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that, that the Holy Spirit would, would remove unnecessary distraction upon every child of God out there. Upon every servant of God out there too, who are still manipulating destinies through the, use, through the misuse of oil of oil, through the misuse of feet wash, uh, holy communion. All those ministers out there, in the name of Jesus, I pray for you today. May you receive the open eye of the Holy Ghost. May Holy Ghost open your eye. May your soul come to repentance today, in the name of Jesus. May the Holy Spirit go and touch your heart for genuine repentance today. May you set those that you, you hold captive free under your bondage in the mighty name of Jesus. 
May you deliver those that you hold can use of anointing, this and that and all that. May the blood of Jesus go and set them free and open your eyes of understanding to know that you are just wasting your time. That the Holy Spirit will help you so that you can start getting ready to you as the servant of God in the mighty name of Jesus. And to every member, so God, I pray that Jehovah will keep you going. Those of you who already knows the truth, those of you who by the help of the Holy Spirit you have understood,